Citizens of the world, welcome to this Halloween Azure infrastructure update. Ah, oh, Azure, you think the cloud is your ally. You merely adopted the cloud. I was born in it, molded by it. Anyway, welcome to this Halloween Azure infrastructure update. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, I dived into thinking about the Azure SQL services, the database, the MI, the hyperscale, the high availability and the disaster recovery options and how they work with your applications. I also updated my learn.onboard2azure.com site, my curated path with some updated videos. On to what's new. So the free offers with Azure, they've now added additional free options for the, both the ARM and the AMD-based B series, that burstable for both Windows and Linux for 12 months. So now, hey, I get even more compute. If I'm using Azure Kubernetes service, the ephemeral disk, instead of having a managed disk, it uses the temp or caching space on the host which means, hey, I don't have to pay for the managed disk. Also, it's gonna have lower latency. Well, now, even if I use the ephemeral, instead of being a platform managed key for the encryption, I can have a customer managed key in my Azure Key Vault. That is now GA. Also for AKS, I can now disable the SSH access to the nodes. This would be really thinking of reducing the possible attack surface and that's now in preview. Azure Functions, I've talked about this in the past. Now there's additional .NET performance optimizations have gone GA. So this is where I'm using that isolated worker model where it can run a different version from that of the host. I do have to upgrade to the latest versions of the core dependencies, but now there are improvements, especially around that cold start, such as placeholders, uh, optimized executor, to improve the overall experience of our Azure functions. On the storage side, Azure NetApp Files now supports the cool storage access. So this enables us to, for maybe that less used data, I can offload it to regular Azure storage from Azure NetApp Files to optimize my costs. Just to think of my less used data, hey, I'll tear it off onto Azure storage. On the database side, Cosmos DB for Postgres SQL, that means it's using the Citus extension to give us that very large scalability, very high performance by sharding the data, now supports Postgres 16 in GA. And now, even if I'm using the continuous backup capability of Cosmos DB, I can leverage the Azure Synapse link. So remember the Azure Synapse links, what this is doing is I have my regular transactional store that's going to use a sync job into the analytical store, which is column store based, so it's better for those analytical queries. And then the Azure Synapse link brings that into Azure Synapse for near real time business, intelligence, analytics, think extract, transform, load processes without an ETL job, without having to do any kind of manual jobs in there. So now it has that continuous backup support. Also, now that Synapse link works with my Cosmos DB Mongo database collections. So now additional supports beyond what it already supported. And my PostgreSQL Flexible has new minor version support. 15.4, 14.9, 13.12, 12.16, and 11.21. And then PostgreSQL Flexible Auto Grow has gone GA. So this means I need to stop worrying about the provision storage. And what it will do is it will increase the storage if I get within a certain threshold. So if I have more than one tebibyte of provision space, it will activate if the space falls below 10% or 64 gigabytes. If it's less than one terabyte, then the threshold is still 64 gigabytes or 20%, whichever the values is smaller. They also have online disk scaling, eliminating a lot of server restarts. Note, if you cross the four um, 
heavy bite boundary, then it does have to be a manual scaling operation because it's changing that underlying disk type. And then SQL 2014, well, that 10 year product life cycle will end July 9th, 2014. And so they've announced um, extended security updates. And then miscellaneous, you may have noticed this already. We used to get security alerts from azure no reply at microsoft.com. They've now changed to MS security no reply at microsoft.com. So any rules you may have to alert to you to those, you need to change who that originator is now coming from. And then finally, Azure Site Recovery now has built in Azure Monitor alerts for things like replication health, um, unhealthy status, uh, failover failures, agent expiry, and many more. And what this standard mechanism means is now I can use those action groups and anything an action group could trigger. Think about a webhook, a logic app, an email, all of those other things I can very easily integrate in. And that is all. Now you have my permission to stop watching.